Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and today we're going to be taking a look at an old one here. This is a Stevens Model 887. It's kind of a uh, kind of a weird 22 caliber uh, semi-auto tube fed magazine on it. Uh, it's got like a two-piece bolt in it and when you fire it, it uh, you know it picks up a round, puts it in the chamber, you fire it and the bolt comes back and does not release again until you let off the trigger. Uh, I'll show you how that works. Let's take a look at how this gun comes apart. There is only one screw holding the action into the stock, but it's kind of tricky the way it comes apart. Uh, not too difficult, but let's take a look at it anyways. Alright, you're only going to need really two tools to take this thing apart. You'll need a regular screwdriver and just a small Allen wrench of, it really doesn't matter what size as long as it's small and I'll show you what that's for. We'll get it flipped over here, take the one screw out, it's kind of an odd shaped screw. It uh, goes into a lug that holds the uh, magazine tube to the action too. Anyways, it comes right off really easy. And then there's all your internal workings. Now it looks like it's uh, kind of a jumbled up mess there, but um, everything has a purpose. There's the lug where your screw holds the stock onto the action. The magazine tube kind of curves as it goes up in there. And this is your feed ramp or your feed mechanism right here that uh, pushes the round up into the chamber. Now one of the things I do not like about this is this charging handle on here is plastic. Um, be careful with it. If you break it, uh, you're going to have to find a used one because there are no replacement parts made for this rifle. All right, first thing you want to do is make sure it's clear. Of course, you wanted to do that before you took it apart anyways. Um, and what we're going to do is take this Allen wrench and put it right up under here. You don't have to do it right this minute, but we're going to go ahead and take the uh, trigger mechanism off of the action. All right, there's two screws that hold the trigger mechanism on there. Now, this one is kind of a bear to get to because you can't get the screwdriver straight down on there. You can get it a little bit and give it just a little bit of a turn. Once you get that, take your screwdriver and kind of angle it downward. Uh, it's probably not the best way to do it, but it's about the only way there is to do it. It would have been nice if they would put an Allen screw in there. Now, once you get about a turn on it, you should be able to grab it with your fingers and turn it the rest of the way out. Now it is a little short screw, little tiny thing, so you want to be careful not to damage that either. Then your front screw on there comes out pretty easy. You can get full access to it with the screwdriver. You'll feel a little bit of tension push up on it, and here's your two lugs right there. They catch One catches each part of the bolt in there. Um, it's a pretty neat mechanism in there. Um, it kind of works the, the plungers kind of works the plungers in kind of you know opposite directions set that off to the side now here's where you're going to want this in there now the back of the bolt here this little piece on the end here this is like a I guess it's aluminum it almost feels like it's a over molded plastic with an aluminum insert in it but it done screws from the back it should not be very tight in there but you go ahead and take that out now there's a spring in there that's going to be pushing tension up against it Well, make a liar out of me. All right, now there's where you're going to want to have that Allen wrench in there because that Allen wrench is holding the feed mechanism from pushing down. You should be able to pull the back part of the bolt out, and there it is with the springs in it. And here's your firing pin right here. It's kind of a long machined firing pin. And then you should be able to get the rest of your bolt out, pull your charging handle out, and then the rest of your bolt should slide right on out of there. You'll need something to kind of push it back a little bit. And then you pull it right out of the end there. And that's all there is to it. Like I said, it's a two-piece bolt. And what holds it together inside there is your firing pin. Your firing pin fits right down in this T-shaped slot there. Rides in between them. And your firing pin actually holds your charging handle in there too. And once you've got that out, everything, you've got good access to the bore right there. You can get down inside there, if it'll get in focus, and clean everything up. You're going to want to use a lot of Q-tips with this one because there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in there that uh, can hold dirt. Now, this one was really pretty clean when I took it apart, but 
I went ahead and cleaned it up, inspected everything in it, make sure everything's in good working condition. Now we're going to take and reassemble this. The bolt, this is where your, your rounds are going to feed in there. It does have double extractors on it. So that goes down if you got the gun upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> it goes down if you got the gun upside down. Those will be looking upwards. So we'll get that put in the end there. Now you got to get it up far enough so you can get your firing pin in there, but you can't put your or get your charging handle in there. But you have to get the firing pin in. Make sure you got it turned the right way. It's rounded on one side that goes towards the top of the action. Get it in there. Then you should, well, you got to get your charging handle in there first because the firing pin is what holds it in. But get a feel for it, pull it back until your charging handle will go in. And it'll also, the charging handle also locks the bolt open. There's a hole on the other side right there where the, uh, the end of the charging handle goes in there to hold it open. So once you've got that lined up, then get your firing pin in there. And that'll keep your charging handle from coming out. Then take the other part, the rear part of your bolt, and there's that T-slot. That's going to fit right in the firing pin there. And then get it pushed in there. You should be able to push it almost all the way forward. Take your butt plate there, the end of your action. Like I said, it. Uh, not sure what it's made out of. This is aluminum here, but this almost feels like plastic, so I think it's kind of over molded onto it. And take and screw that in there. And it's not going to tighten all the way down because then it'll be kind of out of time, I guess. There's tight, and that's not going to fit in the, in the stock the right way. So you'll back it off just a little bit. And then you can go ahead and pull this Allen key out. And like I said, that just keeps that lifting mechanism from hitting up against your bolt there. All right, once you've got everything in there, then you can function check it. Make sure everything's good. Then put your trigger mechanism back on there. All right, once you've got that started in there, make sure it's not cross-threaded. All right, then you can put your front screw in there. And then you have to fight with the rear one to get it in. Don't over tighten them because you don't want to strip them out. Once you've got that all on there and it's nice and firm, you can go ahead and take your last screw and put your stock on. All right, now that we got it all put back together, we'll get this thing out on the range and see how it shoots. All right, guys, here we are out on the range with the Stevens Model 887. This is a tube-fed magazine. So to fill it up, just uh, pull your magazine tube back some. You don't have to take it all the way out. There's the follower on the end. You want to make sure that's above the window. Drop your rounds in there. I'm not sure how many this holds. We're going to see if we can, uh, we'll get 10 of them in there to start with. And we'll see if it'll hold any more than that. But just drop it in there, let them slide on down, you know, with the bullet pointing toward the front of the gun. You'll see the little cutout on the mag tube there that shows you which way they go in. There's 10. I'm thinking it should hold at least another five more. We'll try it. Looks like it's probably going to be 14 rounds in there. Uh, no, we can get a 15th in there. Maybe. Nope, it's going to be 14 rounds. So we'll get that 15th one out of there. All right, this is a uh, Woodstock semi-auto 22. Um, it's got a really cheap scope on it. This is the one that came with it. It says Savage Springfield on it. I assume it's probably a Tasco. Tasco made a lot of them like that. It's a four power scope, 15 millimeter diameter. 
I've got a target set up at uh, 25 yards away. I have not shot this before, so I don't know uh, how accurate it is. I don't know if the uh, if it's been sighted in or anything. But we're going to take a shot at the uh, target on the right, at the center of it, and see how it does. Get the eyes and ears on and give it a try. Well, there's one shot right there. Uh, we're going to walk down there and take a look at it real quick and see how it did. Okay, there's my one shot. Aimed for the center. Hit way high and to the right. So uh, we're going to do a little adjusting on it. Give it another shot. Give it a try. All right, one of the things you're going to need when you go to adjust this sight is you're going to need a coin. I'm going to use a penny. Hopefully it'll fit in there. But there's these little tiny caps on here. we got to take them off. All right, then underneath the caps, you're going to see these old screws here. Now, there's an arrow that says turn it this way up. Well, what that does is that moves your point of impact up, so we need to turn it the other way to get the point of impact down. And uh, we'll tinker with it a little bit, get the coin in there, and give it a couple clicks and see how it does. Now, the clicks on this thing are not real uh, firm or audible, so uh, I gave it about a quarter of a turn down there. At 100 yards, it should be, uh, I think it was probably about eight clicks, so that's probably about uh, uh, an inch down, two inches down, somewhere at 100 yards, so it's gonna be a lot less at 25 yards. And then we'll go ahead and get it adjusted over to the left a little bit, and on here it says, uh, turn it that way to the right, so we wanna move the point of impact to the left, so we need to turn it the other way. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it in this shot here, but this uh, scope is really kind of cloudy looking. Uh, it's not the best scope. It is a little 15 millimeter, like I said, I believe it's Tasco, even though on the top of it it says uh, Savage Springfield 4x15. But uh, kind of neat looking, and it is original to the gun, so I'll leave it on there. All right, here's our second shot at the target. We'll see how that does. All right, there's our second shot. We'll take a peek at that, do a little more adjusting if necessary. All right, need to go down about an inch. All right, there it is. There's a first shot, second shot, third shot. I can still go down about another three quarters of an inch. I only gave it about an eighth of a turn there. I'll turn just a little bit more and we'll call that good. And then I will show you how this action operates on this thing. It's kind of funky. Take the safety off. Now watch, the bolt will come back. I'll hold the trigger and it'll stay open. And when I let off, it'll go back. Kind of weird. Now, like I said, this is, uh, it's an older gun. It was manufactured for three years, the 887 was. Uh, there are some other variants of it. Uh, not sure what the models are on them, the 81 or 80, 87, I'm not sure. But anyways, this one uh, didn't stick around long. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's not extremely complicated. Uh, there's quite a bit of workings going on in the action there. Uh, maybe, you know, they found a cheaper way to manufacture and, uh, you know, that might have been the demise of this one. But uh, the wood stock on it, it is painted. Uh, it's kind of a real thin brownish paint. It's not a stain. Um, from what I hear, the, the type of wood that they use on this is, uh, doesn't soak up the stain very well, so they put a paint on it. It does have some pretty deep checkering on it, but it's not groove checkering. It's kind of stamped in there. Um, and, and it looks pretty good. Uh, this one's in really good shape. Not much wear on it at all. Now, one of the things I have read about this is because of the way the action works, that it handles uh, pretty fast cycling, uh, you know, well, and I've got to have to try it and see how it does. Didn't seem to do too bad. Uh, you could probably go a little faster than that, I'm not sure. Let's throw another 14 rounds in there and see how it does. 12, 13, 14. Now, putting the tube back in, this little follower on the end there kind of wobbles around. It's supposed to do that. It's not broke. Push it down in there. You'll feel the rounds kind of slide up inside of that tube. That tube has got the spring on it that keeps pressure on it. That keeps them working into the little elevator that lifts them up and shoves them into the action by the bolt and, you know, repeat as many times as necessary. 
take some shots of the 100 yard target. All right, I've got the 100 yard steel target up there. We're going to give it a few shots, listen for the ting. It's a little breezy out today, but uh, it should make it there, no problem. That's it, 14 rounds. It's an old gun, shoots great. All right guys, there it is. This is uh, the target I was shooting at at 25 yards. A whole bunch of little holes right there. At, uh, that's why I did some of the rapid firing at the target. Um, not a bad little shooter. Uh, it's not around anymore. There's no more parts available for them. Uh, at least not that I could find unless you get on. Uh, there's some sites out there that carry parts for some of the older discontinued and antique firearms. You may be able to find some on there if you've got one of these that needs work. If you have one and it doesn't need work, get it out on the range. Enjoy a little bit of shooting with it. It's a fun little gun. It's kind of weird the way the action works, but it functions and it seems to be pretty reliable if you ask me. And I only shot about, uh, I don't know, 25, 35 rounds, 35, something like that, of uh, 22. These are Winchester 40 grain 1300 feet per second uh, super speed round nose copper plated bullets that's a mouthful but anyways it shoots pretty good it probably handle just about any ammo I'm not going to do a bunch of uh, extensive testing with it but um, it's a good gun I picked this up used at a Cabela's in their gun library where they handle some of the older firearms and it was in really great shape so I thought I got to get it and uh, the price was right so I walked out of the store with it Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could, hit this button up here to subscribe. Hit this button over here to check out some of my other videos. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.